A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. all your iniquities, heals all your ills, he redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. So far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness in the eyes of God, for it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruse, and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the person, present, or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to no one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be the child of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes to rain up, to fall on the just and unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. 
The Gospel of the Lord. A song by Andre Crouch, a contemporary gospel artist, uh, goes this way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. For our world today, above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Can you help me sing? Jesus is the answer for the world today. For the world. Above him there's no other. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. And I mean that as an answer to the problems that we have in our world. That Jesus is the answer for the problems, especially the problem of division that we have in our world today. And division is one of the key sins that took place in humanity because God created humanity, but human beings sinned by disobeying, by sinning, is distancing ourselves from God and from one another. Division. Sin is alienation. Every sin puts us apart from God. Although God created us that we will have a link, we are wired to God. God is our God, our creator. We are God's creatures. There is that link between us and God. And we are supposed to maintain that link. Without that link, we are dead people. But we, by sinning against God, we also sinned against one another. Uh, that's what happens when you sin. When you sin, you do something against another human being. Sin is not just something in the air. Sin is against one another in our relationship, human relationship. When we break that relationship, we are breaking our relationship with God too. So sin is that alienation. So Jesus coming into this world was to fix that, to fix our broken human condition. How we have made the world into divisions of all kinds, how we have injected division in everything that we do, how we have injected competition, a spirit of competition into everything that we do. If we look at our world today, it's, it's, it's all a zero-sum game. That, that when you lose or when you win, it means I must lose. This is, this is the way things are going in our world. And we allow, uh, Christians have allowed, uh, although we have inherited Jesus' way, uh, we say Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer to fix our broken world. But many times we Christians have allowed, we have allowed the world to, to take away that Christianity from us. And even though we all come together to worship, sometimes we we make enemies because of different things that are out there that we, we, we support. 
We let that dictate who we are, how we relate with one another. So I say Jesus is the answer. And today, when you look at the gospel reading, Jesus talks about how we fix the division that we have in our world. He says, do not make enemies. Instead, always try to make friends. Christianity is about the business of making friends wherever you find people. Every time you come together with somebody, you try to make a friend out of the person. You try to make a friend even out of those who persecute you, those who harm you. You try to make a friend out of them. How are you going to do that? How are we going to make friends out of those that harm us, out of those we disagree with. Christianity's secret to survive, how Christianity flourished so that you and I can become Christians today was because they obeyed this law by Jesus Christ. This is the secret of Christianity to survive is this beautiful idea of loving enemies. It is a very tough pill to swallow. This is a very tough teaching. The normal way that we know very well is you hate your enemy. You don't love your enemy. Your enemy is looking for you to do bad. You hate your enemy. The ordinary thing to do is someone takes one tooth out of you, you take their tooth too. Eye for an eye. That's the, that's the normal, that's the fair way that we have learned. Eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But Jesus tells us today, oh, no, 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 no. The bar is higher than that. The Christian way that will fix all divisions in our world, that lifestyle is beyond the ordinary. When people talk about extraordinary or supernatural, all we are talking about is that there is is a higher bar, a higher value system. That's Christianity. You have to let your righteousness go beyond what everybody, the bandwagon, is doing. You have to love your enemy instead, not hate your enemy. This is a very difficult thing. The only way uh, we can do this is always to remember that there is a common ground. I am interested in us, Christians, Because Christians are the ones who have to bring this message to the world that is divided. But like I'm saying now, unfortunately, we have bought into what the world gives us. And we have forgotten our Christianity. Instead of we bringing our Christianity, loving our enemies, and teach people by our own way of living to teach the world, to teach our country, to teach our families. How to, lo- how to make friends all the time, we have allowed our country, we have allowed our politics, we have allowed all these things to teach us how to live. So much, that, I mean, the reason why I'm saying this today, right now, is that partisan politics has really affected Christianity a lot. Partisan politics. And this is an elephant in the room. We can't sweep it under the rug. Don't come to me and, and booing and crying and saying, oh, yeah, 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 you know, talking politics in church. Where do you think politics come from? <laughs> politics, uh, the, word, the Greek word polis is the city. How to manage the city is politics. The Greek gods, Greek gods, they were agents of politics. That's a whole religion. Politics comes from religion. 
And Jesus Christ is interested in that. And we are the people who do politics. We are the Christians who do politics. So why shouldn't I talk politics in church? Jesus wants to, to, to change and transform the way we do politics. Politics is not the problem. Partisan politics is the problem. That division, that partisanship, that is the problem. Because many times what is happening here is that, is that all of us have a common ground. We're all sitting here. Some are Democrats. Some are Republicans. Some are, some are whatever, OK? <laughs> but that is not what defines who we are. Who we are is what Jesus gives us today. Who we are, we all believe in Jesus Christ. How we express that in our politics, that is your, when you go home, I am not coming to follow you to find out who you vote for. <laughs> I shouldn't. And no one should come after you because you voted for that person or that person. No one should do that. I will preach over here, and I'll tell you what Jesus says. You take that, you go home, you take the two candidates, evaluate them. If you agree with somebody 60% and you agree with the other person 20%, you vote for the 60% one. And I'm not the one to come and judge you. No. We all agree on the baseline. If you want to make friends, I mean, people are not enemies. They are not your enemies. The Republican is not the Democrat's enemy. Because we all sit here, there is something we all agree about. And that is what we have to celebrate all the time. That is what we have to look at. We all believe in Jesus Christ. Now how we express that, how that comes out in our politics, that is our decision to make. And you face that decision yourself. And I'm not coming to, 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 to make you an enemy because of that. You st I still love you. You're still my, my, my parishioner. You're still my community member because you believe in Jesus. Well, give it four years, your president will be gone. Another one will come anyway. <laughs> That's gonna, it's, not, it's not sustainable. It's not going to stay there forever. So I don't agree with your politics, but I love you. I can love you. I can still continue to do other things that I agree with you with. We can go together and sweep and visit the hospital. We can go together and feed the poor. We can go together and do something else. I won't go with you to go and vote for somebody. Yes, I won't do that. I don't like that. But I like you, just like God does with us. God does not like what we do, but God loves us because God created us. That is what it is. We love Jesus together. We together believe in Jesus. Now, how we are going to practice that in our lives? I am not the police of that life. I'm not going to follow you to your bedroom to tell you what you should do as couples. I can't do that. I can't tell you how you live, how you raise your kids. I will preach to you here. I will tell you what Jesus says. What you do with it is very important because you don't just carry what I say here wholesale to go out there. No, because you all come from different places. We all come from different places. We all have different experiences. And like we say in Bible study, when you read the Bible, what you are going through comes through in the Bible. The Bible meets you where you are. The Bible answers your particular question, which is different from another person's question. So making friends is about finding common grounds all the time. Find that one thing that you agree with, with this person, and hammer on that. Use that. Use that to be able to make friendship possible. I mean, when our children do bad things, do we throw them away? No. 
So Jesus says today, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Christianity promoted that. That was the secret that made Christianity successful because they loved those who were hating them. They loved those who were persecuting them. He himself, Jesus Christ, whilst on the cross, prayed for those who, who were killing him. And he's saying that that is the secret. That's the secret for survival. And, and, and by the way, when he says, they slap you here, turn the other one. He says, when they slap you in this, on this cheek, turn the other cheek. That sounds foolish. But it's not foolish at all, because there's a meaning to that. Because when they slap this side, this place becomes, becomes troubled. That becomes red hot. Yeah? When they slap here, that place becomes disturbed. That place becomes violent. So to turn the other cheek, the other cheek is the soft part. The other cheek is the, is the uh, 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 non-violent part, is the smooth part, is the cool, cooler part. So turn the other cheek means don't respond to violence with violence. Don't respond to it never worked. Christianity, central message is non-violence. If you respond to violence with violence, it will never work. You will never survive. Christianity would have been wiped off if they had to go trying to, 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 to fight violence with violence. Nonviolence is able to fight and conquer all divisions, making friends and not making enemies. Because if you make enemies, someone says, the enemy of my enemy is my but someone says, the enemy of my enemy is me. Because if you make enemies, well, the enemies, they consider you too as an enemy. So if you make an enemy, you become an enemy too. You are the enemy of your enemy. I'm, I am. But to make friends, to find common grounds, that is the Christian way. That is why we say Jesus is the answer for our world. Jesus is the answer for our politics. Jesus is the answer for how we live as citizens in this country. Jesus is the answer to the division that is going on in our world. Just like we can support different teams, football teams in our family, and still love each other, so we should. So we should love each other regardless of whether we are Democrats or Republicans. We are here. And I'm not going to call who are Republicans and who are Democrats. <laughs> we are Christians. We believe in Jesus Christ. And we believe that Jesus' teaching is true. It's a hard pill to swallow. But if we want to follow Jesus, yes. We must say, yes, Lord we're going to follow you, and we're going to heal our world from sin and division, especially these political times that are upon us. May God bless us and help us to heal our world with a Christian way of life. Amen. Amen.